So like many of you, my charger selection has been expanding out and now I don't have enough capacity for all those plugs at my workbench. So today I'm gonna to show you how to quickly go from one duplex outlet to two duplex outlets, which is a very approachable project for a DIYer comfortable with doing electrical work. So let's jump into it. With your outlet tester plugged in, I'll hit the breaker and confirm that the power is off. Then I'll remove the front plate and then use my razor blade to score the outside of the front plate, ensuring that I don't damage the paint on the wall while trying to remove it. Now once the front plate's off, then we'll remove the outlet and see what we're working with. Now before you go too far, I do like to double check with a non-contact voltage tester just to make sure I'm not missing any hot wires, maybe even from a different circuit, inside the box. So now we're clear to start taking this old outlet out. Now we all will have a little different setup. Right now I have two blacks, two whites, and then I have a pigtail for my ground coming from the two grounds back in the box. All that means is one of these is power coming in and then the other is going to another outlet downstream. So it's passing the hot, neutral, and ground downstream to another outlet. Now for most of us, depending on how old the install is, you're most likely dealing with what's called a new work box. So it's going to be either fastened to the left hand side with a stud on this side or right hand side nails going into a stud on this side. A few different ways you can see that. Some you might be able to actually see through the box where I can see a stud here on the left hand side so I know it's fastened over here. And what that means is I'm going to extend my box this way because I will be using an old work box that is just gonna insert into the hole. And then when we tighten it, these arms come up and that's what pulls it into the drywall and holds it into place. So you wanna make sure the way you're cutting has no obstructions and has an ample opening behind it for the old work box to fit into place. Another way to find your stud, if it's on the left-hand side or right-hand side, if you can't see it, is to use something like a magnetic stud finder. And you're looking for fasteners where the magnet will hold on to. So I found one right here. And that means that this fastener holding the drywall in, most likely, is in the stud. So the stud is on this side. And that confirms that we will want to expand out and cut an additional slot on the right-hand side. Now, since I have plenty of wire here, what I'm gonna do is just cut these off with my micro side cutters and start fresh. So what I'm gonna do is line up one of the corners so that it's already cut correctly. This side is gonna line up to the stud and then we're going to cut this direction. So I use my torpedo level just to make sure I get everything cut in level. Technically to enlarge this hole, I would prefer either using a roto zip, which makes fast work of cutting holes in drywall, or my favorite, which would be just an oscillating tool to cut out this opening. So instead of using the rose zip or the oscillating tool, I'm actually gonna cut this one with a simple jab saw. So if you don't have those tools, you can get a jab saw for five to $10 and still do this project. Now with the old box out, I'm gonna just do a quick dry fit, make sure the hole is right size, and it is. So once you've confirmed that, now I'm gonna run my two separate Romex lines coming in from the top, 
And then with those pulled all the way through, I'll tighten the two mounting screws. Remember that's flipping that lever tab over and then that's starting to secure on the backside of the drywall. Then you'll do a quick pull test and make sure it's securely in place. I'll just do a quick review of what I'm using here to wire everything up. Now I have 12 gauge wire coming in even though these are 15 amp outlets and you could be using 14 gauge. So I always have some 12-2 Romex laying around. So I'm able to cut off at least six extensions, more like eight inch, and strip those down. So I have a neutral, white, a hot, which is black, and then the ground, which is the bare copper. Now I'm, I have two sets here because I'll be doing what's called pigtailing. There's a few different ways to wire this up, but I will be using the pigtail method, and I'll tell you why here in a bit. Instead of wire nuts, I do recommend Wago 221 lever nuts. This is the five pin or five slot version, but I always carry a two, a three, and a five on me at all times. So I have 20 or 30 of these on me at all times for various projects. And you can look in the description, you'll see links to all these. Wagos are a little hard to pick up. Lowe's and Home Depot do not carry them, not sure why. In my area, I can get some at Menards, but uh, I usually actually just buy them in bulk off Amazon. Now, when it comes to the duplex outlets or receptacles themselves, I had an Decora series, flat face here, more modern look. This is my garage, so I don't really necessarily need a Decora series. So what I'm going with is a Legrand commercial grade duplex outlet. Why I go commercial grade, this is my favorite commercial grade, even though Leviton and Eaton are solid. It's a little, heavier construction but with a compact design and then I will be leveraging what's called back wiring. You can see there is a plate back there where you're able to insert your wire and then tighten your side terminal and that will actually clamp. That plate will pull in and clamp this wire down opposed to running a clockwise J hook or shepherd's hook around the screw which I know is a little intimidating for some people. It's not too hard, but I just like the back wire. And don't be confused between back wiring, which is what we're doing, and what would be called back stabbing or speed wiring, which is these little holes right, holes right here that you can usually use 14 gauge wire. You stick it in there and there's a little tab that holds the wire in place. I don't like that type of wiring. So just to be clear, that is the difference. This is not, we will not be doing backstabbing, although it looks fairly similar. And you really have to go with kind of the commercial grade or up to get that back wiring feature added in. One thing, if you do need to, I will need to make J hooks for the ground. So almost all strippers have a little built-in loop that you can make a proper size J hook just by putting it in that slot. So just a little tip if you haven't seen that before but let's start to wire up the pigtails. So I pre-wired the outlets with the hot ground and neutral. And now I'll take my five pin Wago 221 lever nuts and I'll place one on the neutral, one for the hot, and then the same for the ground. That way once they have those in place, then I'll start wiring in the left side outlet And the nice thing with the clear housing on the 221 is you can see the wire is fully seated prior to closing the lever. But I also would recommend doing pull tests just to confirm. Then you'll tuck your wires back into the box. Once you get those where you need them, then I'll start to center up the outlets and secure those with the two screws. I kind of go back and forth and make sure it's not leaning left or right and then once you get it fully tightened in place, or actually right before it's fully tightened, what I like to do is then take my face plate, do a check, make sure everything's lining up. If it is lining up, then I'll do the last couple turns securing everything in place. Then with it fully tightened, then I'll take those two mounting screws on the face plate, tighten those down, and I have learned to consistently get those in the vertical direction. So you, flip your power back on and then so you can flip your power back on and then with your outlet tester, confirm that the new duplex outlets work, and in my case, they do. 
Now remember, I did have a Romax going to a downstream outlet, so you want to confirm that one's working as well. Overall, this is a super approachable project. It's only about $10 if you don't have to buy any tools, and it's about an hour or two. Hopefully, it's a single trip or a single order for all your parts. So jump down in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions, and also, if you do things a little bit differently, I'd like to hear from you. I always appreciate getting your guys' feedback and different ways of doing things or calling me out if I do something wrong. And before you take off, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.